Hello everyone, welcome back. Tom with Capo Fetish. Let's talk about some Stones. Let's talk about our favorite top 10 favorite Stones albums of all time. I've been having a Stones week, been playing the Stones a lot, and I thought, let's just put this video together and talk about some Stones. So I've got 10 of my favorites. I'm going to count them down right now. Number 10, my favorite pre-1966 Stones album, Out of Our Heads from 1965. This is where they really took off as far as popularity goes and uh, became a household name, shall we say, from this point onward. If you got Satisfaction on here, the song that pretty much uh, catapulted him to just superstardom. If you got the B-side of Satisfaction, which is just an awesome B-side. The Under Assistant West Coast Promotion Man. It starts off side one with Mercy Mercy, which I think is one of their real underrated early songs. Just a great track, great Jagger vocal. Uh, you got The Last Time with that infectious lead guitar part from uh, Brian Jones. And you got some covers on here. I'm All Right, Good Times. Um, Spider and the Fly is a great Jagger Richards song. Ends with One More Try. Really, really great Stones. Great early Stones here. Out of Our Heads, the U.S. edition. Number nine is an album that uh, back in the day, I don't know how people feel about it now. A lot of people thought... Uh, Stones have pretty much lost it by this point. I disagree. I think It's Only Rock and Roll is a great record. I'm a little tired of that, that uh, title track. I've heard it so much on the radio, but the album is chock full of great songs and a lot of great ballads. First off, the songs Short, Short and Curly's uh, Till the Next Goodbye are two of my favorite Stones ballads. Just great stuff. Then you got like a funk workout at the end of the album called um, Fingerprint File. With uh, Jagger really getting into the role, really, really um, putting it out there. Got that kind of scratchy shaft kind of guitar going on in that song. You also have a really cool song, Time Waits for No One, with some great guitar playing from uh, Mick Taylor. Luxury is a cool track. Dance Little Sister, If You Really Want to Be My Friend. Ain't Too Proud to Beg, Great Temptations cover. I think it's a pretty solid record, pretty solid. It's not Exile on Main Street, but it's it's Great Stones, in my opinion. So, It's Only Rock and Roll from 1974, for me, coming in at number nine. Now, the next album I'm going to feature, I got a one-star rating back in 1979 from the Rolling Stone Record Guide. They give it one star. One star. And that album is Goat's Head Soup from 1973. I think this is a really underrated Stones album. Came right after Exile on Main Street. I love the kind of the, the the production is kind of it's kind of like more bassy, more more grungy and dirty sounding. Um, I don't know how to even describe it. It just has that really raw raw flavor to it, which I dig. Let's run down the song, shall we? You got side one, dancing with Mr. D. That's kind of cool. And then you've got some really really just deep cuts on here that are great. One hundred years ago, great song coming down again. Great Keith Richards song. Uh, Heartbreaker's great. And you got Angie, the hit. Then you've got, uh, Side 2 starts off with a really great rocker. Silver Train. Uh, Hide Your Love's a cool little workout. Winter is one of their great ballads. And you never hear anybody talk about it much. And then Can You Hear the Music, which is okay. And then it ends with the absolutely filthy, dirty Star Star, which is a great rock and roll tune. I remember seeing Joan Jett cover this song when she opened for the Kinks years ago at the Greek Theater. So yeah, I think this is very, very underrated. I love Goat's Head Soup. This came out in 73. I believe it was another number one hit album. But look at that cover. This has got to be the most disturbing, just strangest Stones cover of all time. Look at the back here, too, with Keith. Just absolutely bizarre and freaky. But I dig it. Goat's Head Soup coming in at number eight for me from 1973. Coming in at number seven is Aftermath from 1966. I like the UK version better only because it has more tunes on it. And some of the tunes that weren't on the US version, uh, like Mother's Little Helper, which ended up on the Flowers compilation. Um, you've got um, What To Do, which was later on, I believe like Hot Rocks 2. And then um, I Am Waiting. And then there's just these all these great songs. I Am Waiting, Take It or Leave It Too is another one that was on the uh, Flowers album. It is a little long, even for a 1966 album. It's pretty pretty damn long, and I think it's because of uh, the long track Going Home, which is not really a favorite of mine. I like the track. It, I think it just goes on a little bit too long, in my opinion. 
Under My Thumb, Lady Jane, just just classics after classics. Stupid Girl, Don't You Bother Me, Flight 505, uh, Out of Time is one of my all-time like mid-60s period Stone songs. Great album here from 1966 on the Stones. This is coming in at number seven for me on my list of favorite Stones albums, Aftermath, the UK version. Coming in at number six is one of my favorite, favorite Stones albums. Uh, I've always loved Between the Buttons. Now, this is the American version. This has uh, Let's Spend the Night Together and Ruby Tuesday, but I actually prefer the British version because I love the song Backstreet Girl, and that's on that version, as well as um, Please Go Home, which is a good little R&B romp. But uh, yeah, this is a great, this showcases a whole different kind of Stones. I, I hear Kinks influences on here, like Cool, Calm, and Collected, and Something Happened to Me Yesterday, which is a great closer with a great key vocal. Love that track. You got My Obsession, Yesterday's Papers. Uh, what else do you have here? Um, Miss Amanda Jones, That Rocks. Who's Been Sleeping Here? There's some def definite Dylan influences going on here with that particular track. Um, she Smiles Sweetly, Connection, a great tune that even... Uh, uh, Richard still plays from time to time. He played with the expensive winos a lot, that track. I think this is just a great varied album. It shows more, um, a little more, even a little more um, variation than Aftermath, and that had a lot of variation. But I like the, the folk influences on here, kind of the vaudeville influences on here. Um, just a really, really great, solid record. And I, again, I prefer the British version with uh, Backstreet Girl, which is one of my all-time favorite Stone song. So Between the Buttons coming in at number six. Coming in at number five is Let It Bleed from 1969. Uh, Jones does contribute a little bit on this album, not too much. Um, he does appear on You've Got the Silver with Keith Richards, I, one of my favorite, favorite Stone songs. I love You Got the Silver. There's a version I have on a bootleg that has uh, Mick Jagger singing the lead, but I think it's more suited to Richards, actually. Maybe I've just heard it more with Richards singing it, but of course you've got Gimme Shelter, which is just one of their um, most iconic songs. Got a great version of Robert Johnson's Love in Vain. I've always loved their version, so good. Um, you've got uh, Monkey Man, I've always loved that track too. Just a great rocker, great guitar lick. Um, of course, uh, You Can't Always Get you What You Want is on here too. Real famous track for the Stones. Um, and I love the title track, um, Let It Bleed. I love when the Stones do country tinge tunes. I think they do country really well, really, really well. And especially on that track, it just sounds great. Live With Me is a great rocker. Just a solid record all the way through. Midnight Rambler. I love the live version of Midnight Rambler on Get Your Yagas Out, though. I think I like that version even a little more than this version. But yeah, just uh, an iconic album from the Stones, Let It Bleed from 1969. They would go ahead and tour behind this album. Of course, uh, the tour would end with Altamont, Meredith Hunter getting stabbed, a lot of other issues going on. Marty Ballin getting kicked off the stage by one of the Hells Angels. Just an absolute infamous concert. If you've never seen Gimme Shelter, check that video out. It's incredible, just incredible. And I think it shows the Stones at their greatest, rawest, purest form on stage. So this is coming in at number five, Let It Bleed. For me, for my personal taste for the Stones, I think this is the last greatest Stones album, Some Girls. This is just a solid album from start to finish. And it's totally timeless sounding. It came out in 1978. Of course, Miss You's on here. That was the biggest hit on here. But you got When the Whip Comes Down. It's just great rockers. When the Whip Comes Down, Respectable. Uh, that nasty song, Some Girls, Great Groove, Harmonica Playing from Jagger. Lies has a punk energy about it. You've got uh, Just My Imagination, another great Temptations cover. Uh, my favorite side, though, is side two, starting with Far Away Eyes. God, I love that tune. Jagger doing his, his little, little twang, his little Bakersfield twang vocal, which is just awesome. And great chorus and Far Away Eyes. Again, I, I, I wish the Stones had done a full album of country tinged tunes. I love when they do country. Um, side two, of course, respectable, great rocker. One of Keith's greatest songs for me, Before They Make Me Run. What a great, great song. And Beast of Burden, that's one Stone song I never get tired of. I just think it has a great groove. I love Charlie's snare on it, that snap. And then uh, Shattered ends the album. I mean, this is it's a five-star classic album. And they never really put anything out as good as this again. Tattoo You has its moments. 
emotional rescue. But after that, you know, the, the quality for me just starts going kind of downward. But, you know, they had a long, they had a long run, even from the 60s all the way to the 70s. A lot of, lot of great songs, a lot of great albums. So that's number three, or sorry, number four. And number three, the unbelievable double album, Exile and Main Street. When you talk about rock and roll, this is really rock and roll defined right here, this album. I mean, it's just raw, it's gritty, it's, it has hooks galore, great guitar parts. Jagger's singing is not real up front, it's kind of buried a little bit in the mix. Starts off with Rocks Off, what a great track. Goes straight into um, Rip This Joint, one of their just balls out rockers. The album is just full of just a varied collection of blues and a little bit of country tinges like Sweet Virginia. Love that track. Got to scrape that shit right off your shoes. Great line. Um, then it has uh, Just Want to See His Face, kind of a little bit of gospel going on right there. Um, All Down the Line, great rocker. Happy, one of uh, Keith Richards' greatest songs. Um, yeah, just uh, some, and just some great, great tunes. And one tune I've really always loved is the last tune on here called Soul Survivor. Love that opening guitar lick from uh, Richards. It's just so, mm. Yeah, just a perfect, perfect album. One of the greatest albums in rock history. But it's still number three on my list. It's not even number one. But there was a period in my life where I was playing this nonstop. It's just a perfect record. And it always puts you in a really good mood. It's a great... It's a great remedy for when you're down in the dumps and feeling down. It really picks you up. Exxon on Main Street coming in at number three. Always loved, this is coming in at number two, always loved Sticky Fingers. This has some of my absolute favorite Stone songs of all time. You got Brown Sugar and Wild Horses, huge hits, but it's the deep cuts that I really dig. I love Sway, the way it starts off, and I think even Jagger's playing guitar on this. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that opening guitar riff or lick, it's so awesome. You got Can You Hear Me Knocking, which almost has kind of like a Santana groove towards the end during the coda. Great guitar playing from Mick uh, Taylor. I love um, You Gotta Move, just great blues, gritty down-home blues, great stuff. Side two starts with Bitch. Great lick, great, great, of course, one of Keith's greatest riffs. And I think one of the most underrated songs on here is called I Got the Blues, uh, with a great, one of Jagger's greatest vocals. Just Heartfelt, just soulful, incredible. Sister Morphine, written about uh, Marianne Faithful. You've got um, another great country tinge number, Dead Flowers, one of my favorites. I saw Bonnie Raitt do that when she opened for the Stones years ago. I think it was at Dodger Stadium. And then it ends with one of their most epic songs for me, Moonlight Mile. Wow, what a tune. I mean, just the, the vibe and the atmosphere and just... The production, just incredible song. Just an absolute five-piece, five-star album. Sticky Fingers coming in at number two. And number one for me has always been number one. I absolutely love Beggar's Banquet. There is just not a second of this album I don't like. Um, Sympathy for the Devil, iconic song. But No Expectations, my God, that is one of the greatest ballads ever written. That beautiful slide guitar playing by Brian Jones. And that melody, uh, that melancholy melody Jagger sings, so, so good. You got more country tinges on here. Dear Doctor, one of their first uh, um, experiences with the whole country vibe. But it's kind of a silly tune, but it's great. Great, great sing-along. Parachute Woman, just down-home country blues, or whatever you want to call it. Just down-home blues with acoustic guitars. That's what I love about this album. It's like, there's a lot of power with just a lot of acoustic guitars on this album. Then you got Jigsaw Puzzle, really great underrated Stone song. Side two is just a, just an absolute perfection. Street Fighting Man, one of my favorite singles of the Stones. Prodigal Son, great, great, you know, I love the guitar playing on that from uh, Keith Richards, the acoustic playing. One of their filthiest songs, greatest song, Stray Cat Blues, great track. Love Factory Girl, that fiddle in there. And then it ends with one of their greatest songs ever, Salt of the Earth. Number one album here for me for the Stones, Beggar's Banquet from 1968. And uh, if, if an alien landed on, the, on my front lawn, it wanted to know what kind of Stones compilation. And there's been a lot of Stones compilations. I would tell this alien, this is the one to get. The singles, Rolling Stones singles from 64 to 71, the London years. 
This is what you call a perfect compilation. It has all their A and B sides from throughout the 60s. And I think Brown Sugar's on here too. I think that was uh, recorded in 69. So it's basically the whole 60s here in this set. And the Stones, what's great about the Stones is their B sides were as good as their A sides sometimes. You have Child of the Moon, B side of Jumpin' Jack Flash. You got Sad Day, I think was the flip side of either, um, oh, I can't remember. You let me know. But uh, we also have, um, yeah, just, just, it's just a perfect listen and a perfect, perfect compilation for the Stones. I used to think Hot Rocks was their best, and they put out a lot of, they put out a lot of um, compilations over the years, some good, some not as good, but to me, this one is perfection. Rolling Stones, La London Years singles. So those are my favorite Stones albums. Let me know what your favorites are. Put your top 10 in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please press subscribe and we'll see you soon, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.